And welcome to the 2013 Open Simulator Community Conference. Uh, today's speaker will be, is well known by just about everybody in the room, I'm sure, and all around Open Sim, uh, Sonny Salamander, also known as his real life name is Thomas Bouchard. He is an IT consultant from Germany. His day job uh, works for a well known company in the healthcare se sector. Uh, he does tasks related to collaboration of knowledge sharing. Uh, one of his key goals in the virtual world is to lower the hurdles that come along with new technology and make it easier to access and to use by sharing the knowledge uh, generally used to actually function in a virtual world. Uh, he founded uh, and registered PyTech, UG, a German limited company and move the project to an official business in 2013. Please welcome Sonny Salamander. Hello all. Can you hear me? I'm hoping that you can hear me. Yes, they can. I've got claps on the screen. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So I, I will start with my little presentation about the pixie viewer and and thanks for introducing me so we can skip the first two slides of my presentation <laughs> because the job was already done and this would be the agenda I hope it is shown on the screen below me yes it is that ah, looks great okay so, I first want to talk a little bit about how Pixie Fuel was created. Uh, and Pixie Fuel was uh, created in July 2012, where I started the development of a browser based view just for fun, you know. <laughs> and in February, 2013 I did a test and I did a tweet a tweet that changed my life completely I created a web GL browser and the virtual world itself I just wanted to let my friends know that I found a way to display 3D content on my iPad uh, but you know <laughs> you cannot keep the secret if you post it on Twitter and overnight, I had more than 300 new messages in my mailbox and my Twitter account. So, then I kept on in March 2013. Um, I published uh, the alpha version of Pixie Fuel, And suddenly, I had, I had more than 500 visitors for the alpha version of Pixie Fuel. And... Yeah, I was thinking about so. Wow, there's a huge demand on this, and this was the time I had to continue with the project, of course. And then later in April, just a month later, I had 1,200 registered user and a lot of communication with companies, and that want to use the pixie view uh, and about the ne network behind and so on. I will talk uh, later about the, the net network structure. And today pixie view is used by more than six companies around the world um, and they are all using the pixie network that I will talk also later about. I call it pixie grid <laughs> because it matches uh, the pixie viewer term, you know. So, and there are some myths about the name, how pixie viewer was established. So, you can choose one of them. So, pixie comes from pixel or pixies come from the pixies that are at night active and you have to revolt overnight or if not they will do nasty things with your stuff and they did of course 
or if it comes from a n former known pixie viewer that was was created in the 50s maybe you have never seen this but um, they already had a stereographic viewer for slides so I believe this is one of the beginning of the 3D um, yeah 3D thing and my first intention was to connect a grid to a browser based viewer so I have seen a lot of grids taking the effort and so on but it didn't not really happen so I would like to have a link sent by email for example click on it and want to be inside a virtual world and I did a lot of work um, I started creating something like a street view for virtual worlds and I was watching others providing fake viewers via the internet like okay click here and in the real you download a full viewer so this didn't work for me and I thought hey there must be a solution browsers getting better and better the performance is jumping up like 100 percent we have the technology it's getting better each iteration each iteration of the browser of Google Chrome for example Google Chrome is one of my favorite browser but Firefox is yeah short behind and each new release of browsers and, and also of mobile devices and that's amazing if I look at my iPad or my iPads that I have <laughs> hey they getting better each day each iteration they re release a new product so and I believe that we can put virtual worlds onto these devices okay next slide a little bit about the architecture of the pixie view so pixie view is a multiple three tier application so and it cannot be run on a single device only so this means you cannot run pixie viewer on your mobile phone completely because it requires a backbone and it requires an API to connect to. To connect, it requires internet connection, of course, and a connection to the Pixie grid, like I call it, to the API, which is available in Europe for consumers today. And for customers, also via the virtual private network that, that I will show you later. And I, I would like to explain the different tier levels. We have the first tier, that is the viewer itself. The viewer is loaded um, yeah, from the internet and it's completely in JavaScript coded. And I will release the viewer by a CC by NCSA license. Um, and this enables you to modify and value back changes you made. So, and it's very easy to modify a JavaScript client. You know, it's much more easier than to modify um, a coded client that you download somewhere. If you ever have tried, you know <laughs> what I'm speaking about. But um, this is not all of, of the show. The second tier is a public API that the viewer is connected to. Um, I'm currently working on a description about the API so everyone can use it. So this is something like, uh, yeah 
public uh, thing that you can talk to with your software. Either if you're using Pixie Viewer in JavaScript or using your own services, doesn't matter. The API is open for everyone. And the API will let you register accounts, log in, and will connect you to the 3D content. And the third tier, this is much more deeper. Um, this is an application server that I call often, this is my backbone. <laughs> this is running in the background, a server in Germany. Um, I'm going to replicate this um, to the network, what we will see later. And normally, you don't have to bother with it. So this is just running in the background, but this thing is doing most of the yeah, CPU work and so on for you. It stores your data and so on. Okay, let's go to the next slide. This is the network that I have created with PixieView. PixieView has a worldwide internal network with a lot of API nodes. Public node currently is the login eu at pixiefuel.com uh, that you can find on our blog. But we also have nodes ranging from San Francisco to New York, Germany and Australia and Japan. And we are currently working um, to get a connection to New Zealand because uh, New Zealanders have a problem with their internet connection. They have to pay international traffic if they go outside. So, this is a challenge for me. <laughs> uh, currently, they do have a local installation running for one of a school. Uh, and this is really great. So, and for the nodes, we only create no nodes with uh, one gigabit internet connections or more, of course, <laughs> if we get more. <laughs> we just want to make sure that we have a low latency, whatever you are connected from. Um, we will see later why. Um, because this is uh, a thing that is related to head-mounted devices. And so we need a, a low latency. So, and while we are running the back end, it's almost connected at 10, 10 gigabit, but the connection to Japan has only two. So I'm a little bit disappointed about this, but I cannot change it at the moment. I'm looking about. Next slide. Okay, prim conversion. No? Open simulator is a data source. Okay. Open simulator can be connected in different ways. Um, as you see in the slide, we have four options to connect Open Simulator um, together with Pixie Viewer and the Pixie Grid. Uh, the first option is we can have an ORL import that completely imports a scene that you have created somewhere. We also can connect live to an open simulator region and this must be mapped within our network. Um, mapped ne uh, means um, yeah, the region must be registered with us and we will forward the uh, login information then for you. So and then you can connect. 
And the third option is that we get the data directly from the database, but this is not really an option because this is delayed. This only helps if you say, for example, okay, I've built a region and I want to replicate it into a pixie fuel, for example because this is not live, this will only be imported once or twice, however you choose it. So, And the fourth option is a SIM plugin, but I do not develop this anymore because it's, it's a complex thing and, and I believe the other options are good enough to connect. This was the wrong slide that I was showing you, I believe. This is the, <laughs> the slide for the prim conversion. Or, is it? Something went wrong. No matter. Okay. I will continue with this slide. Network we had. Open Simulator as a data source, yeah. Oh, prim conversion. This is slide seven. In general, with PixieView, all prim data is converted into mesh. You need to keep in mind. So, everything uh, what we get from Open Simulator will be converted into a mesh format. And it's a little bit tricky to convert this all and the conversion work is done by the clients. You cannot imagine, but it, it will work so. And if, if they have done the conversion, they store it back to the backbone using the API. For the conversion, PixieViewer is measuring the client's network speed and browser capability abilities and powers. So it will pick the most powerful clients to do the conver conversion and if no none is available the backbone will do the conversion. <laughs> of course someone must do that job. But uh, in general normally there are a lot of uh, clients available that can do that job. These are not tablets and mobile phones, but if someone logs in with a high-speed internet connection and a powerful yeah, computer, he will do most of the job. And then it's stored back and made available for all others. So, going to slide A. A little bit about creativity. Go creative. Um, with Pixie Viewer, you can have not only one renderer um, that shows it, uh, the virtual world, you also can have or, or install a second one. And uh, this makes a lot of fun. And <laughs> I built uh, with my diving glass, a 3D view, yeah, for virtual worlds. Just mount your iPhone 5 or 4 in front uh, of your diving glasses, yeah, and get some lenses. If you want to know where to get lenses, uh, contact me, please. They are very important. And you can have um, a very cheap viewer, 3D viewer, for your virtual world. Okay, next slide. Next slide is about encryption and content protection. So, since every content is converted into a mesh format, 
it is made available via HTTP. So that means everyone could download your creations. This is one thing that comes along with the new technology. And I'm not sure how to avoid this. If you have any ideas, please contact me. But, of course, uh, I'm not blind and I'm not looking away from this topic. Um, we have created something. So, yeah, maybe I should not tell you, but yeah, the reality is that we add a watermark into each um, texture and into each mesh. So we can detect uh, when it was delivered and to who. So maybe this makes it a little bit uh, more secure. But in reality, also in Open Simulator, it is um, that you can download everything that you want. Just use the right tools. Is that so? And um, the Pixie View comes with a, a different uh, permission system. Um, some of you might know maybe SharePoint. And in SharePoint, you have a visitor group, a members group, and administrator group. And the same work. Uh, same way works uh, Pixie View, so you can define visitors, members, administrators. <coughs> okay, next slide. Okay, next slide is also about encryption and content protection. Um, in its standalone version, Pixie Viewer does um, do a client to client. Um, Encryption, yeah. I think the audio stream went down. Can anybody hear me? Okay. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, we've had a little technical difficulty here, a uh, little glitch in, the, in what's going on. Uh, we're trying to bring him, uh, uh, Sonny, back online. Uh, yeah. Voice. There he comes. Yeah. Hello. All right. You're okay. here. Can so everybody hear can us? Continue. Is it public well, to the audience? They can't hear Sonny. Uh, clap if okay. you can hear Sonny. Here. Yeah, perfect. Sorry. I was disconnected somehow. Don't know. Okay. Uh, they can hear better, him. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. We can continue. We were at slide 10 about uh, encryption. Uh, what I would wanted to tell you is that Pixie Viewer it, in its standalone version supports client-to-client -client encryption. So this is the strongest encryption that you can imagine, um, especially in the days um, yeah, some things were revealed 
that um, maybe someone is reading your private things. So, and since it is it is based in Germany, we don't have a problem to uh, completely encrypt this stuff of communication. And yeah, you have the right of privacy. Yeah, and we have a special encryption. We are not using SSL or something. We are using <laughs> a completely self-invented uh, encryption thing that covers public chat and private IMs. And audio and video conferencing is also secured, but by SSL, you know, weak, as we learned from Mr. Snowden, <laughs> has a master key. It seems there's a master key for all certificates out there. Um, a lot of people have thought about, but it seems to be true, unfortunately. Okay, so we learned encryption is weak for scenes, and I also cannot make sure that we have an end-to-end -end connection uh, once we are connected to Open Simulator, because the client and the other users that are connected to the grid um, cannot be secured. So I cannot exchange keys or something. So it will break somewhere. You can see it at the slide where the key is with the red X. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So, oh, I love this topic, 3D printing. I love this really much. I partnered with, with uh, I materialize um, about, I don't think, nine months ago. Uh, very great people. They're very helpful. And can you imagine that you can print everything what you have built and uh, open simulator or in Second Life, for example, if you can import it into open simulator. So, I have created an example. So, you just go inside uh, a red box and everything, what you rest there, you can print with just a click. And you can choose from different materials. It's ranging uh, from plastic uh, to stone. They really have stone things. And you can also color it. Try it on. <laughs> okay, um, and then... This is not the last slide. <laughs> All right. No, well, this is not the last slide. <laughs> okay. There's one left. <laughs> Let me find the last slide. Okay. So... The last slide, I don't find it. I cannot get forward or backward anymore. Not sure. So the last slide was about the release plans for the consumer version of PixieDick or Pixie Viewer. And I want uh, to tell you that we will release a Pixie Viewer for commercial things before Christmas. 2013, of course. <laughs> the NSA removed this, that slide, yeah. This could probably be. be. <laughs> because it will never happen. Because uh, they will arrest me for encrypting the internet. This could happen. 
Okay. Uh, I I guess now we'll take uh, some questions and answers. It always uh, starts out slow, and uh, as people think of what they want to say, if you would either IM me or put them in chat, either way, uh, we'll try to get through some of them. Uh, and the first one I do have well, is... Just, just talk to me, so I will answer all your questions if I can. Okay. Uh, one, one question is, I'd like to understand the bandwidth requirements to the viewer as compared to OpenSim. Yeah, this is uh, yeah a big, different, big uh, difference uh, because um, I cannot expect from mobile clients, for example, that they do the same bandwidth job like uh, uh, a home computer does. So, and that's the reason why... Um, the, that the most powerful clients are rendering the scene and saving it back, you know? Okay, and is Pixie Viewer available for testing now? Pixie Viewer is available through our blog. You can log into the European node, that's the public node at the moment. Okay. Uh, one one question we have is uh, uh, you notice that they're using some three JavaScript terminology in code. If Pixie Viewer is using 3.js for rendering, if so, what are you doing to increase its rendering, rendering capability? Can you say it again, please? All right. Uh, Pixie Viewer is using some three JavaScript terminology in code. Yeah. Uh, is it using that for rendering? And if so, uh, how are you going to increase its rendering capability? I'm not sure if I understand this question right. So, yeah, we I have included uh, the three GS uh, library, but I have extended it a lot, and I've created a lot of code around it. So, not sure what your question was, Matt. I think what he's looking for is uh, uh, if it's using 3.js for rendering, uh, is there any way you can increase or will you plan on increasing its rendering capability? No, they aren't. I've coded. Uh, uh, I have coded libraries with amount I don't know, fifty thousand lines of code, along with the three cheers. <laughs> so uh, okay, then yeah, you've, I'm you've just added using a little uh, bit of this. So this is not not uh, relate on on this library. So this is just a helper thing, doing. Uh, uh, some yeah rendering and passing data to it, but uh, the most thing is happening uh, with my own code and yeah and okay. this will oh I, I believe I forgot I forgot this or um, the pixie viewer will be yeah open source did I mention uh -huh. this because I believe a JavaScript client is easier to maintain and to change for all the people here. So everyone can make his own viewer or implement functions that, that we dreamed of, maybe. You know? Uh, that's good to know. All right, we have another question. Uh, you mentioned the clients do the prim to mesh conversion. Is that a port of prim mesher or some, some no. other... Uh, no, it's not a port. Okay. This was coded by me. And it I've was. Created, I, I'm reading the prim data um, wherever I get it from. Um, I can get it from a SIM module or from the database or from open metaverse client. And with this prim data, I'm creating completely new prims that are more efficient than the second life or open 
uh, metaverse uh, prims are and convert it back to mesh. And once one client has done this job, it is saving back that. Or if we do have um, yeah, a dynamic thing, then everyone has to <laughs> render this, unfortunately, or someone will not see the result. So we are in the early stages of this, but this will yeah, grow, I believe. All right, and uh, I'm assuming that also is going to be uh, open source? Yeah, the viewer in the JavaScript will be all open source, yeah, mm -hmm. including uh, the renderer for the okay. prints. And I also see uh, a question about where actually the keys stored. Is there a central depository for the encryption keys? No, they are not central stored, of course not, because we are doing a client-to-client -client, uh, uh, encryption, so this, is, this will never happen. <laughs> okay. Can you talk a little bit about how this might be useful for educational users and what they might, uh, how it might benefit them? Well... <laughs> When I look at the companies that are currently using Pixie Fuel, uh, okay, it's a lot of work, of course, um, because uh, we don't have the user interfaces in place right now. And they are really working hard, but I'm not sure if I can tell you. Um, some of them are doing drone flies for example and yeah also on unmanned uh, flights with devices and uh, checking out the area and so on they they do training on the job yeah okay and, and uh, could I ask you, what is your business model in regard to the uh, commercial lease before Christmas of the viewer? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a real business model, you know. Okay. So, um, there's a new term, the lean uh, startup, you know, where you react uh, to the user requirements. And this is the way I, will, I would like to go. So, that means... Everything must be paid somehow. The network must be paid. I'm hoping that the sponsors or the current users uh, will do this. And if not, so we will have a little fee. Okay, we have another question. Uh, bandwidth is really a concern given the dynamic content. Once a scene loads, and assuming you're doing scene culling, the protocol used by OpenStim can be very small. Uh, this would seem to be require a great deal more bandwidth. Is that actually a fact? Well, the bandwidth is a problem, for example, if you're on a mobile device. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't get the, the, the full bandwidth, of course, and, and you have to pay a lot of money <laughs> for your network <laughs> traffic, of course. But okay. it's not a real problem. So as fast as it is, my network will always be faster than yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, are your avatars uh, also converted to mesh, including the animations, or how is that done? No, avatars are currently not converted. Also, no attachments are converted. Um, yeah. This is a big thing that I have to work on. Um, is that a planned future uh, uh, possibility? It's possible, but um, for the yeah for the web thing, I believe it's not so important. I've met a lot of people that say, "Okay, uh, maybe let's change my shirt or my trousers," and. <clears throat> 
they don't want to customize the avatar so much in if they want they can go and download the full client for example Man. so pixie viewer is the entry into the 3d web and you can share it with a link just a link you can send it with a with an email yeah send a link to your friend visit me in 3d yeah and then you are in if you want more then you can download the full client and customize your avatar or something okay i get a lot of arms suddenly <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden they're coming across mm -hmm. good keep the questions coming folks So, people are asking me uh, to download the source code. I will make it available the next week. Um, also, I will make um, an iOS app available next week. But you would have to contact me because <laughs> Apple refuses any application that enables Safari uh, with WebGL on. So that's a big problem. <laughs> so I need your uh, device number and I can send you a link. You can download a WebGL enabled web browser for iOS devices. <laughs> it's insane, I don't know. But it's <laughs> how the world goes. Will there be an Android application for this? Uh, that's something to me thought me uh, looking no, at. I'm 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 not programming for Android. I'm pro okay. I'm an iOS developer and a Windows developer and a little bit yeah Linux. No, no not really. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> and how many prints can you uh, display on a typical scene uh, in a typical web browser? I can. I can display as many prims as you want. The problem is that the client breaks somehow. In, and this is a, a huge problem also because the terrain alone has so many triangles that a normal mobile phone will not render it. So this is a big trick to limit the draw distance and to uh, uh, break up the terrain and just to display where you are currently and to limit the draw distance. So this is the trick and also not to have uh, your mobile phone for example rendering all the things you know. Well, this is not an application or an app. This is just a modified Safari that has WebGL enabled. But once you enable WebGL in the Safari and publish it to the App Store, Apple says, hey, not with us. <laughs> don't know why. They don't like it. So. Yeah, the question was, uh, when will it be possible to download the source and implement and take that in, and build it into uh, separate platforms where uh, people can explore and, uh, and use that? Yeah. Okay, this will happen uh, before Christmas this year. So I will finish, I want to finish the API description and so on and want to have a, a stable... Um, backbone and so on. Um, you need to recognize that I do it in my spare time. I have a daytime job too. <laughs> and yeah, I will do my best before Christmas 2013. Well, we sure appreciate that effort.
Are there any? I was going to say we just have a. Uh, we need to wrap up. Uh, we have about three or four minutes left. If uh, you have any more questions, please go ahead and uh, either IM me or put them in chat, and Sonny can try to answer those in the specified time. Oh, there's a question about the architecture and web sockets and so on. So, if we go deeper into the technolo technology, I've cancelled web sockets because they didn't work out really well. But uh, for the future, I will implement them again. And depending on the device that connects to the API. At the moment, everything is transferred uh, at HTTP, <laughs> and this is fast enough if you have a good network. Will you open source your libomv client that allows live connections between OpenSIM and Pixie Viewer? Not sure, because it's running on, on the backbone. Mm. I have to think about this. Yeah, we are doing sometimes a long poll um, for specific things, but mostly it's it's fast enough. Um, if we go, if we have a connection times uh, under twenty milliseconds. This works great also for head-mounted devices, but yeah, this is the limit. <laughs> okay, that just about wraps things up. Um, we should... Uh, Dahlia could provide me some code if, she, if he or she wants. <laughs> okay. Uh, that concludes this, uh, this time. Our guest speaker, Sonny, uh, please, as you get up to, uh, to, to leave, please just leave slowly, not all at once, um, or stand around and, and talk to Sonny some more if you'd like. Uh, this presentation uh, is brought to you by uh, the Overt Group, and we sure appreciate what's happening here. Um, we hope the rest of your conference is uh, runs as smoothly as we've seen uh, everything else go here. Uh, okay. uh, please you check much. out check out the web page. And Sonny, thank you. Uh, give for Sonny a, a big round of applause. A great presentation. Thank you very much. And have a nice time and a nice conference. It's running for one another day, I guess. Okay, I'm standing up.